If you use GarageBand to record vocals on your iPhone or your iPad and you're experiencing latency, which is the lag or delay between when you sing and when you hear your voice in your headphones, then this video is for you. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and this is Studio Live Today where I help you create, record and release your best music. Now, latency or lag or delay, whatever you want to call it, it's a pain in the butt and especially when you're doing vocals, you don't want there to be any delay between when you're actually singing the vocals and when you're hearing the vocals back in your headphones. So in this video, we're going to discuss some of the common causes of latency and what are some of the things that you can do and perhaps some of the gear that you can choose to use that can reduce the amount of latency in your vocals. Let's cover the basics first. Latency occurs when you are recording because when you are sending an audio signal into a digital audio workstation, whether it's GarageBand or any other DAW, and then you are monitoring back through that DAW, there is processing time that takes place. So the time from when the audio is sent, received, and then played back along with the other tracks is the latency or the lag that you're going to hear. Now, it's unavoidable to have some level of latency when you're using software. Software. There is hardware monitoring or zero latency monitoring, which we're going to talk about in this video. But if you are monitoring back through your software, you are almost always going to get at least a little bit of latency. But when that becomes so much latency that it's distracting and it's impacting your performance, that's what we want to cover here today. Now, the setup that I'm going to use in this demonstration is just using my Samson Media or USB microphone just to keep things simple. But towards the end of the video, I'll talk about audio interfaces and how you can actually use zero latency or direct monitoring to completely remove latency. But we're going to assume for now that you are going to use something like this and you want to be playing back your audio through your software, so through your DAW. And we're going to be using GarageBand here on my iPad. So let's open up GarageBand and take a look now. We're here in GarageBand on my iPad. Now, instead of just using a blank track and singing to nothing, I'm going to be singing to my track that I'm working on at the moment, which is called Things Change. And I'm working on the mixing and mastering of this at the moment. So stay tuned on the channel because we've got some more videos about this coming up. But at the moment, it sounds a bit like this. The only thing that stays the same is the things will change. So we're working on this at the moment, but what I'm going to do for this example and experiment, I'm going to mute the vocals here and let's pretend that I've got all my backing tracks here and I'm ready to record these vocals. Well, I'm going to hit the plus button down the bottom here and I'm going to go to audio recorder. Now, this is the first thing that I want you to pay close attention to because if we just tap on audio recorder here and we go, okay, lead vocals, let's go with this. You know, I want to throw some pitch control on here. I'm going to up the compression, bit of drive, bit of, bit of ho voice hall there. If I now hit the monitor button and talk into this microphone here. Check. One, two. What you're hearing instantly is that there is a delay between me talking and the voice coming through. So let's just hear that again and just listen out and watch the small amount of delay that we're going to get. And this is the latency between me talking or singing and this coming through. The only thing that stays the same so it's really quite distracting for me when I'm singing and it's probably sounding pretty bad for you as well. Now, what is causing this is primarily this one here, the pitch control. This introduces a lot of latency and if you dial in and you're singing with pitch control on, it is going to be a problem. The more effects you have on here, the more processing is going to be happening and therefore the more latency you're likely to experience. So what we're going to do, we'll turn the pitch control off and turn monitoring back on and now... The only thing. It's mostly gone away. If we now drop off some more of these, you tend to find latency can go down even further. The only thing. So now I'm not getting as much of that effect through on the vocals, which may impact my performance, but I'm getting a lot better feedback. So it's actually coming back into my ears at the same time. So if I was trying to sing along, let's just uh, turn the monitoring on and I'll sing along to a part of this track. Is the things will change and you... OK, 
okay, I've got the wrong part of that. <laughs> but you can you can hear there the difference. So if I wanted to sing to this, let's just come to a part where I'm actually singing the start of this song so that I know the part that I'm coming in here. So if we line this up and let's just actually record a little part of this. We'll go to the start here. Actually, I'll go all the way to the start and I'll hit record and just listen and watch as I sing along with this track. It's a common misconception It's a thing that many feel That the comfort that we have right now Is going to disappear The only thing that doesn't change Is that things will change Alright, so we'll hit stop on that one. We'll turn our monitor off there and we are back here. So let's go back to our instrument, our track view here. And there is our vocals, probably recorded a little bit softly, but as I always say, record your vocals more quiet than you would loud. Like you can actually bring this volume up, you can't crush it back down afterwards. And it's supposed to be a very quiet song anyway. So if we just solo this and listen back, you'll hear that it's a decent sort of recording. Whoop, let's not move that one, shall we? Let's uh, undo that. Undo is your friend. Whoop, now I need to redo. I'm just showing you the undo and redo functions. All right, let's hit play. Right now is going to disappear. So it's it's actually okay, and if we bring this in line with the rest of the track, you'll hear that it's gonna be quite in time and on the beat. The only thing that doesn't change. And now if we do want this to have some of those effects, no problem, we can come back in to our effects here. And now if I was worried about my pitch, I can up the pitch control. We can add that voice hall and a little bit of drive back on. And now if we hit play. Anything that doesn't change is the things will change. So what I'm saying here is that when you are tracking your vocals, Put a few less effects, especially that pitch control that really does impact your latency. Put less effects on there, just enough to make sure that you can hear a little bit of reverb, maybe a bit of delay, whatever's going to help your performance. But then afterwards, you can come in and dial in some more effects. And as long as you get a good performance out of your singing, then you can add the effects afterwards. So that's the software way. That's number one way to reduce the latency is to use some decent gear, like something like a Samson Meteor mic um, or an audio interface, which we'll show in a minute. Sometimes if you're using just the onboard mic and headphones, especially Bluetooth. Now we're not going to talk a lot about Bluetooth in this video, but if you're using Bluetooth headphones, you're going to introduce a lot of latency. I really do recommend using regular headphones. Even if you've got a newer iPhone or an iPad that doesn't have a headphone jack, use your lightning to headphone dongle and record through that because you want a wired connection. I still haven't heard Bluetooth connections that don't introduce at least a few extra milliseconds of, of latency. So let's now take a look at another solution which is using latency free or zero latency or direct monitoring with an audio interface. So when we're recording through any sort of interface like this USB microphone here, the monitor button is this little one that turns orange here. If we tap that on, we, we are, are now hearing, hearing the, the monitoring, monitoring coming, coming through, through there. there. If, if we, we tap, tap it off, it goes off again. Now, when we play back our audio, we're going to be able to hear this being played back, whether we're monitoring or not. So if I wanted to record the rest of this, if I just hit the record button here, even if I'm singing in here, which I'm not, I'm just talking, it's recording. It's just not monitoring, so it's not coming through. It's a hope of kings and peasants too. So if I sang that line as I just did then, then it's still recording here and it's come through very loudly, um, but it, it will have added those effects even though I'm not hearing it. So that's another option we can use is if you just want to hear your own voice and you don't want your voice coming through, you can get what is in essence zero latency monitoring as long as you don't mind not hearing yourself come back through the headphones like that. So that is the one, the quick, quick and cheap and free way to get that. And then when we come back in here, I'll just turn this down a bit because it's going to be a bit loud if we play this back. 
It's the hope of kings and peasants too. That it's actually going to have whatever effects we have on here. So it's adding the effects there, but we're just not hearing them when we're singing back. So that is the first way to use zero latency monitoring if you don't have it as an option. The other way that we can use it is if we have a device like this. This is a Steinberg UR12. It actually has a button here, which is direct monitor. So with that turned on and the monitoring off on our iPad or iPhone like this, it is actually going to play back. So we're still going to hear our microphone come through, but instead of it going out into the software, back into the device, it's just looping straight back into here. So we're hearing the playback as well as our microphone. Now, we're not going to hear the effects because again, without turning our, our monitor, monitor on, on like, like that, that we're, we're not, not going to hear the effects coming through because we're not using software monitoring. So using hardware monitoring can help in this, but again, we won't hear those effects. Now, if you've got any other of these devices, we've got the Focus right here, the Scarlett 2i2. This also has the same thing. We've got direct monitoring on here and a lot of your even lower end USB audio interfaces will have these. Now, if you're looking for a new audio interface or you want more information about connecting microphones, connecting USB devices, there's a video up there. There's a heap down in the description. And at the end of this one, which is coming right up, there's going to be two more videos as well, which you can check out and learn even more about using microphones, USB devices, and recording your vocals right here in GarageBand. So there you go. I hope if you're struggling with latency lag delay in your vocal recordings that this gave you some tips and tricks and ideas to go away and try. There's two more videos right down below right now. If you want to find out some more information, you can subscribe to the channel by clicking or tapping on the Studio Live Today icon and I will see you on the next video.